It all begins when a priest finds two newborn children at the door of a chapel in the village of Hage. The priest decides to take the children into his custody and look after their safety. To his surprise, the names of the children are embroidered on their clothes. The quieter child is Yuno, and the more rambunctious one is named Asta. Fifteen years later, Asta continues to be just as restless. In front of everyone, Asta declares his love for Sister Lily, a nun who serves at the church. Asta is so insistent and persevering that the waifu has no choice but to use her grimoire. Yuno arrives at that moment and reminds Asta that nuns cannot marry. The scene makes two things clear. First, Yuno and Asta have a very unusual relationship. Secondly, Asta does not possess magical powers in a world where magic is within everyone's reach. This greatly demotivates Asta, as he feels he is the mockery of everyone. Additionally, Yuno is an extremely talented and recognized mage in the community. In an attempt to console Asta, Lily approaches him to remind him that the grimoire ceremony will take place soon. However, Asta maintains a facade of confidence in front of others and never appears demotivated, so he starts shouting to remind himself that he promised to become the Wizard King. Asta runs off towards a strange cave shaped like a skull. Lucy seizes the moment and confronts Yuno, as he used to be very different in the past, but everything changed since they both visited the cave. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Asta trains with great determination every time he goes to the cave. He also motivates himself by convincing himself that one day he will be the Wizard King. Days later, it is revealed that once a year, 15-year-old youths from all over the Clover Kingdom gather to obtain a grimoire. Yuno and Asta attend the ceremony, and although the nobles look down on them, they are extremely excited. The guardian of the tower appears and begins the ceremony. All the young people start receiving their grimoires, creating huge anticipation in the place. However, to everyone's mockery, Asta does not receive any grimoire. The guardian tells him that he will have to come back the following year, which makes everyone laugh. Nonetheless, the center of attention quickly shifts as Yuno receives the grimoire of the legendary first wizard king. The entire place falls silent, while the members of the chapel celebrate joyfully. Obviously, Asta tells Yuno that the competition between them will be more even from now on. Upon leaving the tower, Yuno is confronted by two envious youths who dreamed of obtaining the legendary grimoire. However, he is able to defeat them without any problem. In fact, he doesn't even use his grimoire. Suddenly, a strange knight appears and violently subdues the nobles. The knight introduces himself as Repchi, an exiled knight who makes a living as a bandit. Repchi captures Yuno and takes his grimoire, as it is worth a fortune. Asta arrives at that precise moment and fearlessly challenges Repchi. Asta ignores Yuno's warnings and ends up being violently subdued by Repchi, who mocks the young man for not having obtained a grimoire. Moreover, upon hearing that Asta dreams of becoming the Wizard King, Repchi makes the harshest confession of all, there are no magical currents within Asta. Repchi knows this because his chains are capable of sensing magic. Asta is emotionally crushed upon hearing this. However, Yuno becomes furious upon seeing this situation and starts shouting at Repchi that Asta is not a failure. In fact, Yuno confesses that Asta is his rival. Upon hearing this, Asta frees himself from Repchi's chains, leaving everyone speechless. A strange grimoire appears and transforms the atmosphere. At that moment, it is revealed that the leaves of the clover represent honesty, hope, and love, while the rare case of the four-leaf clover means good fortune. However, the fifth leaf of the clover is where demons reside. A flashback sets the story ten years earlier. Yuno used to be extremely fragile and shy, the complete opposite of Asta, who was self-confident and always encouraged Yuno. Lily, Asta's platonic love, told the children the story of the first wizard king, who defeated a dreadful demon that threatened to destroy the world. Upon hearing this story, Asta got very excited as Lily explained that the Wizard King's throne is renewed from generation to generation, making Asta realize that he could lift all his loved ones out of poverty. In fact, Asta dreams of becoming powerful to protect everyone and improve the lives of the orphans. Hearing this, Yuno and Lily are moved, as Asta's eyes are full of determination. However, as time passed, Asta grew more and more frustrated by being unable to use magic. For this reason, Asta strove to serve and help everyone in the community. Nevertheless, the priest who adopted the children suddenly appears and asks Yuno to deliver a letter to the mayor, as he needs to obtain supplies for the winter. Asta insists on taking care of the delivery, but the priest trusts Yuno for the task, so Asta hurries to find another way to be useful. At night, Yuno reaches his destination and successfully delivers the letter, but a criminal follows him closely. Asta doesn't know what's happening, but he starts to worry about Yuno's delay. The criminal gives Yuno a humiliating beating and takes away his most treasured possession. Yuno tries his best to retrieve his pendant, but the criminal demoralizes him and Yuno gives up. However, Asta suddenly appears and begins to fight the criminal. Naturally, he is no match for him, as there is a vast difference in strength. 
Nevertheless, Asta's tenacity and perseverance irritate the criminal, who decides to drop the matter and leaves the place. Asta retrieves the pendant and you know is deeply moved. Back in the present, the story resumes the battle between Asta and Rekchi, which ends quickly as Asta is incredibly superior thanks to his new powers, just as had happened before. Seeing this, Yuno remembers what happened 10 years ago when Asta inspired him not to give up. In fact, Yuno swore to himself that he would no longer cry like a coward, but would strive to become strong enough to protect everyone, so they both committed to compete against each other for the Wizard King's crown. Days later, the youths exert themselves tremendously to strengthen themselves as they want to take the annual night exam. Naturally, this greatly worries Lily and the priest as they fear for Yuno and Asta's future. However, the priest feels comforted knowing that Asta will probably fail the exam as he is overly protective. This scares Lily a little as she fears Asta might get frustrated, but deep down she knows that Asta will never give up. In fact, Asta's persistence and perseverance are a source of mockery for many people, as even the orphaned children of the church do not believe that someone without magic like Asta can achieve his dream. However, Asta constantly inspires the children, showing them his progress through his actions. Additionally, he repeatedly teaches them that there is no stronger and more powerful weapon than willpower, which is capable of overcoming any circumstance in life. At night, the youths are treated to a farewell dinner and experience a very emotional moment. The next day, the entire community gathers to see the youths off, and Asta realizes that everything he has done has been worth it, as Nash confesses that he will strive to pass the exam someday. On their way to the royal capital, the youths traverse all sorts of biomes and climatic difficulties, but they do not get discouraged at all. After a long journey, they finally arrive at the capital. After wandering around the center for a few minutes, Yuno and Asta find the castle, where they will take the exam. The receptionists there examine the grimoires of all the applicants, which creates great anticipation. Naturally, everyone notices that Asta doesn't possess a shred of natural magical power, as a flock of birds is chasing him, indicating his lack of magic. In fact, Asta runs all over the place trying to shake off the birds, but he encounters a mage who makes everyone tremble, as he looks like a bodybuilder. The entire place falls silent as Asta stands before one of the captains of the Nine Orders. In fact, just a few minutes later, the rest of the captains of the Nine Orders appear, sending the hype through the roof. Sec, one of the applicants explains to Asta who each of the captains is and how important the orders they belong to are. The throne of the Wizard King is contested among the Nine Order captains, but the captain of the Golden Dawn Order is the favorite, as it is considered the most powerful order and only elite mages are admitted into it. William Vengeance, the captain of that order, starts the night exam by casting a spell to fill the place with brooms. As expected, Yuno amazes everyone, demonstrating incredible talent while Asta can't even move his broom. Sek is the only one who tries to encourage Asta and attempts to help him. Sek supports Asta throughout the exam despite him being the literal laughingstock of everyone. In fact, the final exam involves demonstrating their skills in a real confrontation, so Sek volunteers to fight Asta under the pretense of helping him pass the exam. However, when the combat is announced, Sek's attitude changes drastically, revealing his true intentions. Stek attacks quickly, leaving everyone speechless with his display. However, Asta quickly foils his plan, stealing everyone's attention. Asta defeats Stek in an epic manner thanks to his grimoire and wins the fight. All the captains are surprised to see this. Yami Sukira, the captain of the Black Bull's order, is the most astonished, knowing that Asta doesn't possess a shred of magical energy due to their contact. However, the rest of the applicants do not notice the same and continue to see Asta in the same light. Following this, a nobleman named Salom approaches Yuno to challenge him. Naturally, Salom is extremely arrogant and conceited, treating Yuno with disdain repeatedly. However, when Salom channels his attack, Yuno leaves everyone in the place stunned by effortlessly countering Salom's super attack. At the end of the day, the exam concludes and one of the captains explains the selection process. Upon being called, the applicants must step forward and the captains of the Nine Orders will raise their hands if they are interested in recruiting them. However, the process is extremely rigorous, and a large number of applicants are not chosen by any squad. When Yuno is called, Asta becomes worried. However, his worry is unnecessary as literally all the captains raise their hands. To get closer to his goal of becoming the Wizard King, Yuno chooses to join the Golden Dawn squad. Asta is immensely happy about this, but his joy quickly turns to tension. Asta is called, but none of the captains raise their hands, and everyone in the place asks him to leave to speed up the process. However, Asta refuses to move, which irritates all the applicants. However, to everyone's surprise, Yambi Sukiro descends from the podium and tells Asta to retract his statements, as Asta has been claiming that he will become the Wizard King someday. All the applicants start trembling, as Yambi's power is immeasurable. 
However, Yami doesn't attack Asta, but instead recruits him, wanting to witness Asta's journey up close. In fact, he tells him that he expects to see him on the Wizard King's throne someday. Yuno and Asta say an emotional goodbye as they will have to part ways temporarily. Yami uses a magic portal to take Asta to the Black Bull squad base, which greatly excites the young applicant. On the other hand, Yuno meets Klaus Lunetz, one of the most important magic knights in the squad. Yuno immediately notices that Klaus has no intention of giving him preferential treatment just for impressing everyone in the exam. Meanwhile, Asta gets to know the squad's base and finally understands why everyone considers the Black Bull's squad to be the worst of all, as its members lack even a shred of civility. In fact, their morals are highly questionable. Yami introduces Asta, making it clear that he's a poor rookie from Hage, a poor and distant village. Naturally, this is a cause for celebration for the Black Bull's members as all outcasts are welcome in the squad. Yami acknowledges that Asta still needs to hone his skills, so Magna Swing, one of Yami's most vain disciples, offers to train Asta. In fact, Magna tells Asta that he doesn't seem strong enough to belong to the squad as he doesn't sense a shred of magic in him. Magna starts the training immediately. Asta exerts superhuman effort, as Magna's tests require magic, and Asta manages to pass them through physical effort. However, the last test is literally a trial by fire. Asta must dodge, repel, or withstand one of Magna's most powerful spells. Asta uses his grimoire and surprises everyone with its unique characteristics. Asta manages to dodge Magna's attacks at incredible speed, prompting Magna to change his attitude. Magna channels an incredible fireball and throws it at Asta without hesitation, causing immense fear in Asta. In fact, the fear overwhelms Asta to the point where he goes into shock. However, Asta's body reacts instinctively and repels the attack in an incredible manner. Magna gets excited upon seeing this and congratulates Asta. In fact, he enthusiastically accepts him into the squad. The other members approach Asta and joyfully welcome him as Asta has greatly impressed them. After this, Magna gives him the squad's official jacket and Asta is deeply moved. After this, Magna takes the new squad member to his room. Magna is surprised to see Asta's reaction as the room is a pigsty, but Asta treats it like a palace. Obviously, Asta reveals that he had always shared his room with the children of the church. At the same time, Yuno sees his room, which is extremely luxurious and spacious. However, Klaus treats Yuno with disdain as he doesn't come from nobility and has no expectations placed on him. The next day, Lily receives letters from Yuno and Asta. The priest reads the letters in front of the entire community, which generates great joy in the place as they can't believe Asta succeeded in the exam. Meanwhile, Asta prepares to start his day but notices things are different in the building. In fact, his doubts are immediately cleared up when Magna explains that the base changes shape from time to time. After this, Magna offers him a tour around the building. However, after touring the entire place, Magna suddenly stops upon encountering a waifu. Asta greets the waifu kindly, as Magna reveals she is also a rookie. Despite Asta's kindness, the waifu despises him, as she considers him a commoner. Obviously, it is revealed that the waifu is Noel Silva and Harris of the highest royalty, which explains her arrogance. In fact, she despises the entire squad and throws away the Black Bull's jacket that Asta works so hard to earn. In the afternoon, Asta wanders the building looking for the bathroom but gets lost. However, he encounters Noel, who is training hard in the forest. He immediately realizes that the waifu is unable to control her spells perfectly, which causes her great frustration. In fact, a flashback reveals that Noel suffered greatly because of this, as the members of the royalty can't tolerate untalented mages. Noel's brother is the captain of the Silver Eagle squad, and he himself was the one who marginalized Noel. Asta sneezes, and Noel discovers him. The waifu is furious upon seeing him, believing Asta will mock her. Noel channels a spell to attack Asta, but her insecurities affect her greatly, and her magic goes out of control. All the squad members see the situation and immediately rush to help. Yami knows they can't use magic to save Noel, as the waifu would get hurt. Because of this, he forces Asta to break the spell using his sword. After this, the waifu becomes deeply distressed, thinking her teammates will humiliate and despise her for being unable to control her magical power. However, Asta tells her that he admires her greatly as he had never seen such great magical power. Everyone in the place encourages her and tells her that the Black Bull squad is the perfect place for her, so they return her jacket, and the waifu is deeply moved. The next day, Yami interrupts the squad's lunch to recruit Magna as there's an extremely important mission they need to attend to. Asta feels immense curiosity and admiration seeing Magna and Yami's attitude, but they refuse to take him on the mission. However, the mission was nothing more than a front to play cards with the village mayor. Yami and Magna lose practically everything, including their clothes. 
Even so, Yemi wants to keep playing, so he tells the mayor he will do whatever it takes. Magna and Yemi return to the base laughing out loud as they are unable to beat CE at cards but don't stop trying. After this, Asta and Noel receive their first mission as Yemi explains everything that happened. The mission is to hunt boars in the village of Saucy, as they have become a problem for the mayor. Magna asks Finral to take the youngsters directly to Saucy, but he explains that he can't use spatial magic in places he hasn't visited before, so Magna will have to personally escort the youngsters to the location. Since Asta doesn't have magical power to use a broom and Noel can't control her powers, giving her a magic broom would be a terrible idea. Magna decides to use his personalized broom to carry the rookies, although he complains a lot as he has never carried so many people on board. However, a strange group of wizards arrives at the place before the Black Bulls. The leader of the group effortlessly defeats the boars and proceeds to observe the village of Saucy. At that moment, it is revealed that the group is searching for a hidden jewel in the village. When the Black Bulls arrive, they immediately start hunting. Noel notices that Magna feels fondness for C, the village's mayor. Magna reveals that he used to be a vandal in the past, but the old man disciplined him repeatedly since he was very powerful. In fact, Sidi took it upon himself to train Magna day and night because he saw great potential in him. Magna is forever grateful to him as he was the only person who encouraged him to take the night exam. Magna's emotional story is abruptly interrupted when he realizes that Saucy Village is surrounded by a magical barrier. Asta hurries to cut through the magical fog and thanks to Magna's instructions, the group manages to clear part of the barrier. However, the view they get upon clearing the fog is extremely tragic, as the villagers are about to be exterminated. Magna rushes to save them, which brings great joy to the villagers. However, Magna discovers tragic news. See, he sacrificed himself to save them. The Black Bulls almost immediately spot the wizards behind it all. And although Magna tries to identify them, he fails. The leader of the group attacks violently, but Asta repels the attack immediately, as Magna has spent a lot of magical energy using his broom. The other group members try to take Asta down quickly, but immediately realize that the young man has a peculiar power to repel magic thanks to his sword. Seeing the despicable attitude of the wizards, Asta becomes enraged as they treat the villagers horribly. Heath begins to attack Asta violently, easily generating ice crystals thanks to the fog. Magna rushes to use his fire magic to try to help Asta, but the other group members quickly join the fight. Staying the situation, Noel feels useless, as she cannot help her comrades. In fact, Noel tries to flee but becomes determined upon realizing she can protect the villagers. At that moment, Noel's grimoire fills with magical energy, and the Waifu is able to conjure a barrier capable of protecting all the villagers. Asta takes advantage of Noel's barrier to attack Heath by surprise. Asta's thrust is extremely precise and powerful, but Heath manages to anticipate Asta's movement and reduces the impact. In fact, Heath counterattacks violently and incapacitates Asta. Obviously, one blow is not enough to crush Asta's superhuman will. The young man gets back on his feet and continues to attack tirelessly, even though Heath's magical power is on another level. Seeing this, Magma is moved and begins to remember when he returned to the village after passing the night exam. The entire village celebrated with him and say he gave him a very precious gift. Magma is filled with determination and decides to take action, executing the riskiest and most effective plan possible. Magma uses the last of his magical energy to channel his special attack, the same one he taught Asta during training. Heath initially dodges Magna's attack and counterattacks. However, it's all part of the strategy and Asta perfectly deflects Magna's lethal attack. Heath takes the full blow, but Noel manages to protect Magna just in time. Asta rushes to deliver the finishing blow to Heath in an epic manner, creating huge anticipation among the villagers. Asta immediately collapses unconscious, exhausted from the battle. Nevertheless, the villagers celebrate the success of the Black Bulls euphorically. Asta's bird companion briefly escapes and discovers a valuable treasure in one of the village houses. Magma seals the magic of the sorcerers to interrogate them, but realizes they are unwilling to cooperate. To everyone's surprise, a strange magical tool inside Heath ends the lives of all the sorcerers, revealing they were under superior orders and willing to die if things went wrong. At the end of the day, the Black Bulls bid farewell to the villagers who are still saddened by Sihi's death. However, Magna and Asta manage to comfort them, emphasizing that C lived and died joyfully, leaving a significant legacy for everyone. The Black Bulls continue to exemplify that Emit Commoner can surpass a noble. After this, Asta's bird returns with the treasure in its mouth, piquing the group's curiosity. The villagers decide to gift the treasure to Asta as a token of gratitude. C's amulet. Upon returning to the base, the group notifies Yami of everything that happened. Yami is deeply pleased because they have learned a lot from that mission. 
Naturally, Noel and Asta are perplexed because Yami doesn't seem to mourn C's death. However, Magma explains that C liked to see everyone happy, and remembering him with sadness would be dishonorable. After this, Yami reveals that the Wizard King awarded a recognition star to the squad. Although the youngsters don't fully understand what this means, they are overjoyed. Vanessa explains that stars add prestige to the squads, which brings even more happiness to the youngsters as they feel useful to the order. As if that weren't enough, Yemi distributes the salary for each member of the squad. Asta goes wild upon seeing this as he has never seen so much money together. Naturally, he decides to send all his salary to the church. But Vanessa convinces him to keep a portion for himself as he earned it honestly. Moreover, the Wayfu invites the youngsters to explore the downtown market. The youngsters happily explore the entire market. But, to their surprise, Vanessa decides to take them to a different kind of market since she didn't find everything she was looking for. The Waifu leads the youngsters through a secret wall to look for some special items. To everyone's surprise, Sek was also at the market playing cards with an elderly woman. After losing a large amount of money to the old woman, Sek encounters the Black Bulls. However, Asta rushes to help the elderly woman as a pickpocket takes advantage of her. Obviously, Sek doesn't want to feel overshadowed by Asta again, so he decides to go after the thief. Asta pursues the pickpocket with great determination, causing the thief much despair as Asta matches him in speed without using any magic. In fact, Asta manages to destroy the thief's smokescreen, making the chase even harder for him. However, Sek arrives just in time to steal the glory. Nevertheless, the pickpocket poisons Sek, terrifying the wizard. Sek believes he's going to die and asks Asta to fulfill his dreams, acknowledging Asta as a worthy rival. Obviously, Sek doesn't die as Vanessa arrives just in time. Besides, the poison was insignificant. After this, Sek takes the pickpocket away and bids farewell to Asta. The Black Bulls bid farewell politely to the old woman and to everyone's surprise, it's revealed that the old woman is none other than Julius Nova Chrono, the Wizard King. Furthermore, the Wizard King is extremely interested in Asta's unique ability, as he's never seen anything like it. Following this, Julius becomes interested in Yuno, who is on a peculiar mission. Under Klaus's supervision, Yuno and Mimosa must escort Solemn, the arrogant nobleman whom Yuno defeated in the exam. The situation is not only uncomfortable, but also raises great concern for Klaus as there are too many mysteries surrounding the mission. Indeed, Solemn's behavior is extremely strange. Klaus's suspicions are almost immediately confirmed when a strange black cloud manifests among them. Yuno rushes to investigate, while Klaus and Mimosa take defensive stances. A group of wizards immediately attacks Yuno, but he manages to defeat them. Surprisingly, the attacks seem to be aimed at Yuno, which greatly increases Klaus's distrust. Solemn thanks Yuno for his efforts, and to everyone's surprise, the nobleman requests to visit Yuno's village to honor him. Upon arrival, Yuno reveals that the first wizard king defeated the great demon in his village. In fact, the demon's skull is still in the village. The group arrives at the church, causing immense joy in the community. Klaus insists on continuing their path, but Solemn wants to stay a few hours to spend time with Asa's family. So everyone enters the church. The church members prepare a special dinner to honor the guests. They focus intensely on meeting each of their needs. Lily realizes there's no more water, so she decides to fetch some from the cistern. To her surprise, Solemn offers her his jacket to keep warm. However, Lily is taken hostage just moments later, alarming the group. Klaus suspects that those behind the kidnapping are the same ones who attacked Yuno earlier. Yuno doesn't hesitate to go rescue her, despite Klaus strongly opposing deviating from their original objective. In fact, Yuno encounters one of the culprits just meters away from the church and defeats them effortlessly. Almost instantly, Yuno confronts the second member of the bandit group and proves once again he's on another level. Upon entering the cave, Yuno finds Lily in an extremely perilous situation. The kidnapper reveals that his sole objective is to destroy Yuno, offering to release Lily only if Yuno relinquishes his grimoire. The kidnapper shows no interest in Yuno's valuable grimoire but knows stripping Yuno of it would prevent him from draining the magic knights. To the kidnapper's surprise, Klaus suddenly appears and defeats him without harming Lily. Klaus reveals he would never abandon an innocent person, as magic knights exist to protect citizens, not to grant privileges to nobles. Afterward, Klaus begins to expose each flaw in Salem's plan. In fact, Salem is under a truth-telling spell by Mimosa. He confesses he deeply hates Yumo for humiliating him during the exam, which motivated his meticulously planned revenge. Fortunately, Klaus was attentive to all the clues. Yuno is surprised by Klaus' behavior, realizing his martial demeanor is just a facade. Unbeknownst to them, Julius Novokronov had witnessed everything once again. Days later, William informs the group they have received a recognition star from the Wizard King due to their feat, 
as suspicions of corruption surrounding Salem's family have been confirmed. Meanwhile, the Black Bulls passionately debate what should be the name of the bird that constantly accompanies Asta. Luck proposes naming the bird Nero, a name that seems to please the bird. Yami interrupts the group suddenly to inform them that a new dungeon has been discovered near the Diamond Kingdom, a territory with which the Clover Kingdom maintains diplomatic conflicts. To everyone's surprise, Yami confesses that the Wizard King personally requested Asta's presence on the exploration mission, which greatly excites the young man. Yami appoints Luck as the leader of the mission, citing Noel and Asta's potential but acknowledging they need to refine their skills. The group travels to the location thanks to Finral's spatial magic. The group slowly ventures into the dungeon and thanks to Luck's cunning, they find the secret entrance. Noel and Luck become extremely excited upon sensing the enormous amount of magical energy flowing in the area, which saddens Asta since he cannot perceive mana due to his non-magical nature. Asta accidentally triggers a trap, putting Noel in danger. However, Asta manages to destroy each of the traps, surprising Luck. Indeed, Luck senses someone else's presence in the area, so he instructs the young ones to continue navigating the dungeon traps while he goes to investigate. Barely after Luck leaves, Noel accidentally falls into one of the traps, prompting Asta to rush to her aid. However, both end up in a highly dangerous situation. Fortunately, Yuno appears heroically and saves them. Asta and Noel meet up with Yuno and his group. To Asta's surprise, it is revealed that Noel and Mimosa are cousins. Asta wounds Claus of Pride by stating that the Black Bulls will complete the dungeon before the Golden Dawn squad, prompting Claus to order Mimosa and Yuno to strive to prove the superiority of their squad. Obviously, Asta and Noel lack Mimosa's abilities to navigate the correct path in the dungeon, but Nero successfully guides them. On the other hand, Luck manages to defeat all of the Diamond Kingdom's subjects, finally coming face to face with Lotus of the Abyss, the squad leader who possesses immense power. Naturally, Luck's expectations soar. However, after a brief battle, Luck starts feeling that his body isn't responding as usual. Lotus explains that the entire area is covered with his paralyzing magic, which is undetectable. Meanwhile, the Golden Dawn squad suffers a sudden and violent attack that leaves Mimosa incapacitated. A flashback reveals a bit of Luck's childhood. His strange behavior brought him trouble throughout his childhood, even with his mother who constantly disciplined her son for his strange ways. However, when Luck proved to have an innate gift for magic, his mother completely changed her attitude and complimented her son, so Luck became addicted to fighting. Back in the present, Luck ferociously attacks Lotus, ignoring his injuries. However, his body is exhausted and out of energy, so Lotus takes advantage and casts an immobilizing spell on him. Meanwhile, Mimosa quickly conjures a spell to heal the mortal wounds inflicted on her by Mars, the strange sorcerer, who surprisingly attacked her. Mimosa apologizes to her companions for being knocked out so quickly, as she is the only one capable of using healing magic. Kloss doesn't scold her, however, as it was all premeditated by Mars. As if that wasn't enough, Mars keeps concentrating his attacks on Mimosa, so Kloss rushes to protect her. Kloss orders Yuna to stand down as he prioritizes the mission over his own life. Yuna refuses to comply with the orders due to the enormous danger Mars poses to Kloss and Mimosa. The same happens with Luck and Lotus as Asta refuses to complete the mission without Luck. Lotus is on another level and manages to subdue Lux, so Asta and Noel jump onto the battlefield to join him. Luck refuses help, as he is still traumatized by what happened in his childhood and believes that no one will want him if he doesn't show his strength. Because of this, Luck continues to fight Lotus intensely and despite Asta's warnings, constantly compromises his physical condition. Fortunately, Asta intervenes and completely ignores Luck's pleas. Seeing this, Luck realizes that his teammates legitimately care about him regardless of the results he gets in his battles. The young men cooperate to attack Lotus and thanks to an incredible strategy, manage to corner him, as Lotus' strange magic is hard to predict. Asta successfully attacks Lotus and incapacitates him. In fact, Lotus is terrified by Asta's deadly blows and decides to flee the scene immediately, recognizing Asta as extremely dangerous. Luck rushes to pursue Lotus, but he manages to escape successfully. On another note, it is revealed that Mars, the young man who posed a challenge to Claw's group, is none other than a cruel experiment of the Diamond Kingdom, explaining his cold and calculating nature. Mars' devastating power overwhelms the group, but Asta arrives just in time to save them. Everyone present is astonished by Yuno's abilities, except Yuno himself, who already knows Asta's virtues well. However, Mars wastes no time exploiting Asta's weaknesses to attack. Naturally, no blow is able to break Asta's spirit, and to everyone's surprise, Mars is defeated in the most epic manner possible. Witnessing this, Yuno is deeply moved, recalling how Asta used to be in their childhood. 
Klaas seizes the moment and seals Cross. He also takes away his grimoire to avoid any inconvenience. After this, the group heads for the entrance door of the dungeon chamber. Klaus swallows his pride for a moment and acknowledges that the Black Bulls were instrumental in completing the mission, so both squads enter the dungeon at the same time. Asta destroys the entrance door and as expected, the chamber is filled with priceless treasures and riches. Yuno comes across a strange scroll and rushes to check it out as it is very striking. However, upon opening it, all the letters on the scroll are erased. Suddenly, Mars Grimoire flies out from Klaus' hands and alarms everyone. Mars suddenly appears and blows Kloss away as Mars is able to use fire recovery magic, even though his magical nature is ice. Mars violently attacks Noel and knocks her out which infuriates Asta. However, Mars worked out a strategy to counter Asta. Mimosa rushes to heal Noel's wounds as the waifu is extremely weak. Asta despairs as he cannot defeat Mars using the same strategy as before. However, Nero guides him to a new sword. Fortunately, Asta arrives just in time and manages to wound Mars. However, he immediately notices that Mars' wounds heal instantly. In agony, Noel enchants Asta's sword. Thanks to this, Asta channels a devastating attack and blows everyone away. Unfortunately, Asta receives a fatal blow to the abdomen. Asta concentrates deeply to dodge Ray's flurry of attacks and completely takes the enemy's attention, so the girl is able to escape the scene with Noel's help. Leopold and Noel try to jump into the battlefield to help Asta, but Raid summons a new creature to avoid a threes one fight. Obviously, this makes things extremely difficult for Asta, as Raid's summon has an extremely high attack range. Asta starts to get irritated by this, but a devastating attack destroys Raid's summon suddenly. Fugolian enters the scene in epic fashion and surprises everyone. Asta is extremely discouraged by this, as he can't believe the difference in power between the two. However, to everyone's surprise, Fugolian apologizes to Asta for not picking him during the exam and congratulates Yami for being so smart. In fact, before they start fighting, Fugolian tells Asta that he will have to surpass him if he wants to become Wizard King someday, recognizing the young man as a worthy rival. After this, Fugolian begins to interrogate raids and realizes that the young man is nothing more and nothing less than an exiled magical knight who passed the exam six years ago. Raids joined the Purple Orca Squadron, but was expelled due to his strange magical nature. Upon hearing Raid's story, Fugolian is shocked as he cannot believe what they did to Raids due to his incredible talent. However, Fugolian knows that Raid's actions are unjustifiable and does not hold back at all when attacking the young man. Obviously, Raids does not give up so quickly and summons his most powerful creature, which is able to create a large magical barrier to block attacks and reflect them. Although Raid's strategy seems perfect, Fugoli manages to penetrate his magical barrier even during the flurry of attacks, as he is able to identify the weak point of the barrier. As expected, Fugolian gives Raids a life lesson by telling him that strong people protect weak people, not attack them. Leopold and Noel combine their attacks to defeat Raids' last summoning, so the young exiled knight is knocked out. Fugolian captures Raids and confiscates his grimoire. He also begins interrogating him, as it is impossible for Raids to have invaded the capital without receiving help. His suspicions are confirmed only a few minutes later, as the members of the different squads are dragged into a magical trap. Thanks to her grimoire, Yuno manages to dodge the space magic spell, but all of her companions are teleported away. After this, a witch appears on the scene and begins to taunt the knights, as they have innocently fallen into her trap. The waifu wastes no time and unleashes a storm of spells on the place, absorbing the vitality of the citizens. Seeing this, Yuna rushes to attack the waifu, even though the difference in power is noticeable. At the same time, Raids reveals that the target of the invasion is Fugolian, who is teleported with space magic in front of Asta, Noel, and Leopold's eyes. The waifu physically and morally tears Yuna apart, altering her senses. However, this causes Yuna's spirit to soar, so the young man begins to gather an inhuman amount of magical energy and manages to channel self's power to cast a devastating spell against the waifu, who cannot believe what Yuno is capable of. While all this is going on, Charmy devours absolutely everything in the palace. However, the Loli's feast is suddenly interrupted because of the witch, so Charmy is furious. The Loli summons a magical lamb and begins to absorb all of the witch's mana. After this, she delivers a devastating blow and knocks her out, which leaves the palace cooks dumbfounded. After this, the witch falls unconscious and releases all the vital energy she had accumulated, so the citizens of the kingdom regain their youth. Yuno enters the palace to see who gave the witch the coup de grace and meets Charmy. The lowly blushes at the sight of him, as Yuno saves the feast she was eating. After this, Yuno collapses due to the effort she exerted during the fight. 
On the other hand, Asta experiences one of the most tense and frustrating moments of her life on the battlefield, as she is unable to understand Rei's plan. However, he proves that Fugoling's advice has deeply touched him, as he stops for a moment to think instead of attacking instinctively. In this way, Asta discovers the hideout of Valtos, the sorcerer who uses space magic. After this, Valtos brings back Fugolian. Upon seeing him, the youngsters freeze as Fugolian is severely wounded and lost consciousness due to the enormous amount of blood he shed. Nala quickly realizes that Fugolian is still alive as his grimoire is intact. Because of this, she rushes to stop the bleeding using her own robes. Voltas begins to conjure a spell to remove raids from the battlefield, but Asta manages to stop the spell using his anti-magic swords. Enraged, Asta begins to violently attack raids as he wants to give him a spoonful of his own medicine. Leopold and Asta manage to corner raids, but the place suddenly begins to fill with a strange magical energy. A group of mysterious sorcerers appear on the scene, making it clear that the invasion was planned by a huge group of people. Seeing this, Asta gets extremely excited and decides to stitch up the evil wounds raids gave him. Obviously, Asta just wants to prove that he's not the least bit afraid to fight. The wizards begin to taunt Asta and unleash a flurry of attacks on him, and although they believe this is enough to break Asta's spirit, the young man manages to break every single spell. Leopold is obviously inspired by the sight of Asta and joins the battle despite being at a disadvantage. The youngsters leave everyone speechless, as they possess unmatched combat prowess. However, the difference in numbers makes the difference, and they begin to be cornered. Fortunately, Noel manages to summon an incredible magical barrier to protect them from the flurry of attacks. However, one of the wizards is quick to absorb the magic from the spell bit by bit and manages to create an opening in the barrier. After this, the wizards seize the moment and launch a large flurry of attacks against the young men. Asta and Leopold absorb all the damage and are knocked out. Fortunately, when the wizards attempt to attack Noel, the magical knights appear just in time and blunt the attacks. Voltas is surprised to see them again, so it is revealed that the knights combined forces to reach the capital as quickly as possible. Mimosa rushes to keep Fugolian, who keeps losing blood alive. The sorcerers try to flee, but Nozel Sola begins to conjure a powerful spell to prevent them. However, the group uses a strange magical tool to absorb Nozel's spell. After this, the sorcerers take Asta hostage and lead the place using space magic. As the sorcerers retreat, it is revealed that the group is called the Eye of the White Knight and that they aim to destroy the Kingdom of Clover. Nozel begins to reorganize the kingdom's defenses along with the other squads, which irritates Noel as the waifu wants to go immediately to save Asta. However, Nozel gives her a reality check and explains that none of the knights are in a position to undertake a rescue mission. In addition, it is revealed that the wizards have cut the lines of communication, which explains the lack of reinforcements in the capital. Meanwhile, the members of the White Knight's Eye argue about the outcome of the mission, as they have made too many mistakes. In fact, there were no orders to capture Asta, but they could not resist the idea of thoroughly investigating his strange gift for breaking spells. However, upon entering his lair, the wizards are perplexed to find Julius Novacrono. The Wizard King literally makes the wizards tremble with fear, as his power is at an unimaginable level. In fact, after flawlessly dodging their attacks, Julius locks them up using his strange magical nature. After this, Julius releases Asta and begins to interrogate the sorcerers. However, the leader of the organization appears on the scene wrapped in a halo of light and dazzles everyone. In a millisecond, the leader rescues his subordinates and leaves the place. Although it all happened in the blink of an eye, Julius manages to hold one of the sorcerers as a prisoner. After this, Julius takes Asta back to the capital and leaves the knights speechless, as they literally appear on the scene overnight. Klaus, Mimosa, and Noel can't hold back their joy and run to hug Asta even before they hear Julius' reports. Seeing what happened to Fugolian, Julius begins to draw conjectures and deduces that the group took the pendant from Fugolian to use the strange trail he saw in the lair. However, Julius does not share his hypothesis with the knights as it is extremely sensitive information and he does not want to rush. Despite his wounds, Leopold leaves the infirmary to receive Asta, and in front of everyone's eyes, he makes the same mark on his forehead as Fugolia in the form of a promise, since he also dreams of being a wizard king in the future. Days later, it is revealed that Julius does not give the official version to the citizens to avoid fear, as he suspects that there is a traitor in the kingdom. Julius interrogates the prisoners for answers, but gets absolutely nothing, as the wizards are extremely loyal. In fact, Julius orders the royal wizards to use magic to get answers, but even in this way, he does not get the expected results. In fact, only moments later, it is revealed that the wizards were trained exclusively for this, as they possess incredible devotion to the leader and are extremely loyal. 
On the other hand, before retreating from the capital, Asta realizes that Charmy was there from the beginning. He even learns that the waifu was extremely important in the battle against the witch. Arriving at the Black Bull's fortress, Asta tells his companions everything that has happened in the capital. He also brags about his new rank, since he was promoted due to his prominence in the invasion. To everyone's surprise, Charmy was also promoted as she dealt the final blow to the witch. Fortunately for Asta, Yemi tells him to take a little vacation, as he hasn't rested a day since he joined the squadron. To take advantage of Asta's vacation, Finral organizes a group date with his friends. Obviously, unnoticed by Finral, Noel follows them very stealthily. The young men arrive at the restaurant and meet the Waifus, who were anxiously waiting for the magical knights. However, the Waifus are very disappointed as they did not expect to meet the Black Bulls. This makes clear the bad reputation the squadron has due to their lack of manners. Finral goes to great lengths to avoid discomfort as he is a simp. However, his efforts are in vain as Luck and Asta have no romantic interest whatsoever and behave as if they have never spoken to a woman. Although the young men don't notice, Noel is watching everything from up close. In fact, the waifu disguised herself as a waitress to go unnoticed. As expected, Noel's jealousy quickly subsides when she sees that the date is a failure. However, things change a moment's notice. Luck impresses one of the waifus due to the enormous enthusiasm she possesses for magic and combat. In fact, she is as crazy as he is, so they both leave the restaurant to train. On the other hand, Finral's perseverance pays off and he manages to spend time alone with one of the waifus. Seeing this, Asta becomes extremely nervous, as he was not prepared for such a moment. Fortunately for him, the waifu notices his nerves and tells him that he doesn't have to go through with the date, as she is not interested in meeting anyone. The waifu reveals that she only accepted the invitation because she is constantly fighting to give her siblings a good future. Asta immediately empathizes with the waifu and her story, as she knows exactly how she feels. In fact, Asta also shares his story and surprises the waifu, as she did not expect a magical knight to have lived as a commoner for so long. Logically, Nona watches all this furiously. Fortunately for her, an extremely out-of-place man interrupts the date and begins to mock Asta, as he believes that the waifu only accepted the date to marry a magical knight. As expected, Asta is extremely upset to hear this, as he sees the sadness on the waifu's face. Obviously, he beats the man up and humiliates him in front of the entire restaurant. As she gets to know Asta better, the waifu begins to feel attracted to him, but quickly understands that he is not interested in meeting someone, as his heart belongs to someone else. Obviously, Noel was spying on everything from the shadows and almost faints upon hearing that Asta was in love with someone. Unfortunately for Finrol, the date is a bust. The days go by normally at the Black Bull's base as Asta uses his vacations to train superhumanly, just as he did all his life. In fact, the young man hasn't changed a bit and his dreams remain the same. To become a wizard king in order to marry Sister Lily. However, his efforts have paid off as he has completely changed the reality of his family, which he had dreamed of all his life. The members of the church enjoy a very different life thanks to the money that Yuno and Asta constantly send them. Before taking the bags of money that the young people are constantly sending, Lily reads the letters to the church members, and as always, the priest becomes dehydrated from shedding tears. Everyone is dumbfounded to learn that the young men have been promoted, as it has only been two months since they became magical knights. In fact, both Asta and Yuno have become role models for the children of the church and the Hage village in general. On the other hand, Claus also learns about the promotion of Yuno, who was promoted to the highest rank of basic knight. Claus can hold back his joy, but does his best not to show it to Yuno, as he is still his superior. Claus hands him a bag of gold coins to congratulate him and leaves the place. Obviously, despite Claus' efforts, Yuno and Mimosa notice his true feelings. Meanwhile, Yemi gathers the black bulls to split the month's profits. As if this news wasn't good enough, Yemi announces that there are no pending tasks, so the group completely relaxes and performs their favorite activities. However, Noel has nothing interesting to do, so she starts spying on Asta again. The waifu discovers that Asta wants to go to the same region she visited with Luck and Finral for the group date, so her jealousy begins to grow. Magna offers to give Asta a ride on her magical motorcycle and the young man cheerfully accepts, so they leave immediately. Although Asta doesn't know it, Gosh, another of the strange members of the Black Bulls, has also traveled to the region to visit Marie, his beloved little sister. However, Gosh almost faints when he sees that Asta has arrived at the church before him. As if that were not enough, Marie is happily playing with Asta, so Gosh becomes enraged and begins to violently attack Asta. Obviously, no mage is able to damage Asta with blows as his body is extremely resistant thanks to his hard training. Gosh begins to cast spells on Asta, so Marie asks him to stop as she wants to marry Asta in the future. Hearing this, Gosh is on the verge of mental collapse. 
However, Asta explains to him that he only traveled to the region to visit Rebecca, the waifu human a few days ago. Asta spends the night with Rebecca and her brothers. The atmosphere is full of joy as Rebecca's siblings adore Asta and see him as an example to follow. Rebecca cooks a delicious feast for everyone present and earns Asta's praise, which infuriates Noel, who is disguised to go unnoticed. The children ask Rebecca to marry Asta, which makes the waifu blush. During the night, Noel notices that the temperature of the place has dropped drastically to the point that it begins to snow in the city. However, it is revealed that there is a sorcerer behind it all. Strangely, the sorcerer hypnotizes all the children in town. Gotch enters Asta's room during the night and begins to violently attack him, but their battle stops almost immediately, as Asta notices that something strange is going on in the place. His suspicions are confirmed seconds later, as Rebecca reveals to him that his siblings have disappeared. In fact, all the adults leave in search of the children almost immediately. Over the finale, the identity of the sorcerer behind it all is revealed. Noel appears on the scene suddenly and arouses suspicion. So she makes up an excuse so as not to be exposed. Despite the tense atmosphere in town, Noel and Rebecca take the time to make a jealous scene in front of Asta, but the young man doesn't even notice. The nun in charge of caring for the orphaned children living in the church appears on the scene and reveals a tragic truth. The snow is loaded with magic. Gosh is furious to see the old woman, as he believes she is responsible for Marie's disappearance. Obviously, the old woman tells him that she cannot personally protect Marie as all children are equally important. To prevent the conflict from escalating, Asta intervenes and tries to calm Gosh down. The group decides to leave immediately to begin the rescue mission and, although Nal wishes to accompany them, the old woman asks him to stay in the city to protect the citizens in case of emergency. After this, it is revealed that the children remain under the sorcerer's control and are helpless. However, the spell stops influencing Marie thanks to the magic mirror given to her by Gosh. Although she tries to conceal it, she does not succeed as she possesses a considerable amount of magic, which is not normal for a girl of her age. Nage, the sorcerer who hypnotized the children, discovers that Marie awakens from the spell, so the girl rushes to confront him. At that moment, it is revealed that Barrow, Nage's brother, organized everything from the shadows as he plans to extract the children's mana to sell it. Upon seeing Marie, he becomes extremely excited due to the sheer amount of magic the girl possesses. However, he violently dismisses Marco, Rebecca's brother, as he has almost no mana. After this, Barrow prepares the final details to begin the ritual. Meanwhile, Noel decides to ask for reinforcements to the capital, but the communication is somewhat awkward because of Sek, who does not take dimension of the situation until Noel explains to him in depth what is happening in the region. Thanks to Gosh's guidance, the group arrives at the target location. However, Asta sees Marco in an extremely vulnerable situation and decides to make an emergency landing. The old woman helps Asta, as she worries too much about Marco's health. Seeing that Marco is under a powerful spell, the old woman is terrified as she cannot undo the effect. However, she is dumbfounded to see that Asta is able to break the spell. Fortunately, Marco slowly begins to recover thanks to a healing spell. Asta asks Marco to wait in place as they must join the battle. Before leaving the place, Asta gives his cloak to the boy to help him overcome his fear. Meanwhile, Nage and Baro decide to start extracting Marie's mana, as they will be able to get a lot of money thanks to this. Fortunately, Gosh arrives on the scene just in time. Obviously, the young man unleashes a beastly flurry of attacks, which terrifies the brothers. In fact, Nage notices that Gosh is a member of one of the Magic Mag squads, so he gets a little nervous during the battle. However, Gosh has no trouble evading Nia's attacks. Barrow takes Marie hostage and puts Gosh in check. Fortunately, Asta arrives just in time and ruins Barrow's strategy, so Mary quickly runs into Gosh's arms to safety. Seeing the children, the old woman realizes what happened at the scene. Asta is furious to hear the old woman as she cannot believe that Barrow and Nage stole the mana from them. However, Barrow uses a sensor to measure Asta's magical power and seeing that the young man possesses no magic, Barrow begins to laugh. Obviously, as has been the case throughout the Enime, Asta humiliates those who mock him. Meanwhile, Sek arrives at the Black Bull's base to tell them about the situation Noel revealed to him during the broadcast. However, his fears about the Black Bull's come true, as the place is a mess. As if that wasn't enough, Gordon appears in a shadowy manner behind Sek and gives him a big scare. Yami suddenly enters the place and Sek seizes the moment to tell him about the delicate situation of Asta and his group, but Yami doesn't even pay attention to him, as he thinks Sek just went to the place to collect debts. Logically, Sek regrets taking Noel's errand. Gosh fulminates Nage and knocks him out in a single attack, which surprises Theresa as Nage clearly possesses an absurd amount of magic due to the snowstorm he was able to unleash on the city. 
Despite not sympathizing with Gosh, the old woman reluctantly acknowledges her strength. Barrow realizes that the battle is lost and begins to devise a plan to get his hands on some of the mana he took from the children, as he is a wizard with very little power for battle. Unfortunately for him, Asta quickly pounces on him and begins to confront him. Barrow tries to negotiate, but he literally earned the hatred of everyone present, so Thersa doesn't even give him time to speak and immobilizes him with chains of magical fire. After this, they both get confident and leave Barrow alone, as they want to concentrate on protecting the children and freeing them from Mage's spell. However, Barrow takes advantage of the distraction to summon a small mud man. As the group takes it upon themselves to help the children, Barrow uses his magic to use a strange communication device. As if there weren't enough distractions on the battlefield, Asta and Theresa begin talking about Lily, Asta's platonic love. Theresa confesses to the young man that she recognized him early on as Lily told her so much about him. A flashback reveals that Lily and Theresa knew each other in the past, as the waifu was instructed at the nun's school. Lily was trying far, far too hard and setting an example for her classmates, which notoriously caught Theresa's attention. The old woman's doubts were quickly dispelled, however, as Lily told her the story of Asta, a child with no magic who strives day and night to become a wizard king. Hearing this, Asta cannot contain his joy, as his waifu feels admiration for him. The emotional moment suddenly comes to an end due to the appearance of Sally, the waifu of the White Knight Eye organization. On the other hand, it is revealed that Sek was finally able to communicate the message to Yami and his subordinates, but none of them gave too much importance to the matter. Sally immediately goes on the attack, so Asta and Gotch come up with a plan to stop her. Unfortunately, the waifu not only possesses a great mastery of her strange magical nature, but she is extremely intelligent and manages to outwit the young men's efforts. As if that wasn't enough, Sally is still obsessed with Asta due to the fact that she is literally the only person in the world who is able to undo spells using her sword. Thankfully, Theresa joins the battle in epic fashion. Asta freezes upon seeing the old woman's abilities, so the old woman is forced to confess that she was part of the Crimson Lion Squadron in the past. In fact, Theresa confesses that she instructed Fugolian in its beginnings. Barrow seizes the opportunity and negotiates his release with Sally. Unfortunately for him, the waifu is completely insane and although she fulfills the deal, she does it in a very different way. Sally injects Barrow with a strange, magical liquid and completely alters his genetic structure, causing Barrow's body to be completely consumed by her magical nature. Now the group must confront a strange, magical creature. The end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new anime recaps.